All right, guys, we are live. It's episode 284 of the Shooter's Mindset. Thank you guys for tuning in tonight. Co-host joining me, Jennifer Seymour. What's going on, Jen? Hey, everybody. Greg Cannon's in the house. What's going on, Greg? Hey, everyone. Star and guest of the hour, Randy Galvin. What's going on, Randy? Hey, how's it going, everybody? It's good to have you on here. We got, like, big news, and I, I consider it that. We got, a, like, a new shooting series amongst like the long range community type of deal right yeah um it's a lrs multi-gun series so we're gonna be it's a precision series kind of focusing on your long range precision stuff but we we're throwing in some pistol caliber carbine and some elr stuff as well into it and we're going to be providing the guns for the pccs and the elr stuff that sounds like All a right. really fun combination yeah so stay tuned, guys. We're going to have a lot more on his series and how to go about signing up and upcoming matches, rules, divisions, all that stuff throughout the show. So if you have any questions regarding it, it's a good time to, if you're watching on the live side on the Facebook, Shooter's Mindset Facebook page, just join the conversation, plug in your questions there. We'll get them to Randy throughout the show. Uh, listening on the podcast or on YouTube, uh, every Tuesday at nine, we do it live on the Shooters Mindset Facebook page. So if you had questions when you were watching on those other outlets, join the conversation. We appreciate having you here. Help the show move along with your questions. Uh, the Shooters Mindset.com. You can kind of keep up with everything the Shooters Mindset, live shows, bios, articles. Uh, usually any major events we have, we probably post them on the website. Um, 2020 sponsorship. We don't have any sponsors 2020 if you want to uh sponsor the show you can email me the shooters mindset at gmail.com to do that um and let's kind of get this one started uh for those who aren't familiar with you randy tell us a little bit more about yourself how you got involved in competitive shooting uh so i got involved in competitive shooting about three years ago started off uh went to a prs match out in uh when it was core and it's altus now uh and then from there i've just built up to going from borrowing a gun for my first match to building my own. And I've started a company building rifles and ammunition as well. Boom. So you got involved kind of how like most of us did just borrowing a gun, getting thrown into a competition and doing your thing. Yep. Had no clue what I was doing, uh, fell in love with it and it has been going ever since. Okay. When, when did you start this? When, when did you kind of borrow the gun and then where are you at now? That was about three years ago that I um, borrowed a gun, and now I... Damn, so, so pretty young. That, that's pretty young, start, starting off, and now you're building guns. What's the company? What ammunition? What's the deal there? Uh, it's LRS Precision uh, is the name of the company. Uh, I just started off uh, doing ARs first, and then I finally got up to bolt guns and stuff now that I'm comfortable with the quality and everything of them. Boom, there you go. Jen, you, shot, you guys shot a couple matches together, right? Yeah, I think uh, first one I think was at core. Yeah. There we go. Um, you guys have Greg. You have an upcoming match coming this weekend. What's the deal? What's new with your? I know you got a lot new with the bolt gun behind you. Yeah. So um, we're heading up to um, Frontline in North Carolina this weekend. Um, shoot a two-day PRS match up there. Um, literally about. 829 finish bolting this all together to sit down at 830 to get ready for the show. Um, I have a lot of new stuff, not all of it's on there. Um, you know, I, pretty much the only thing I'm keeping the same this year um, by next match is going to be the PDC custom chassis that I just absolutely freaking love. And it's pretty much the most beautiful color you could ever get right here. Um, mm. <laughs> and then the, uh, the Warren Skyline bipod, everything else is going to be new for this season. Um, switching from 6.5 Creedmoor to uh, 6, 6 GT, um, uh, switching, upgrading big time from the uh, the Viper to the Razor. Um, thanks, my buddy Ryan Hay, for helping me out with that there. Um, nice. And then, of course, uh, you know, we got started talking to Chase Curtis and kind of really needed one of his actions. So I got an Axiom sitting over here. Um, all that sitting in my backup chassis. Mm -hmm. All the, all the fancy new stuff because I don't have my dies or my uh, stuff to trim or a load worked up or anything for the GT yet. So first match is going to be old action, old barrel, um, but we'll be changing up after that. 
Boom. There we go. Well, good luck on the match. Uh, man, it's like a – man, that's usually not the way you want to go into a match, just assembling your rifle a couple of days before. But, I mean, you got to do what you got to do, right? Hopefully oh, yeah. it works out for you. This is the most <laughs> – this is the most underprepared I think I've ever been for a, for a PRS match. You know, I got pistol matches that I've literally woken up in the morning and been like, well, I'm awake. I might as well, you know, stop at Walmart and grab some ammo and go shoot this thing. Um, eh, you get to – you get to zero it there you'll be fine yeah i mean i just hope that it works you know that, that's the biggest thing you know it's i, I think we're planning on packing tomorrow uh, i'll talk to you about that later but um yeah i have nothing packed i do have ammo i, I have like exactly enough ammo here that i loaded on sunday um but i hope the gun works i'm gonna try and go test it on the way home from work tomorrow um <laughs> nice man yeah. shit living on the edge that's uh, kind of my style yeah literally like i hope that this scope and this mount fits on this action was, was kind of my thoughts going into it mm -hmm. i'm glad uh I'm glad everything fits the way it's supposed to yeah i don't know everybody has their before match major match or some people do it with the locals too uh, approach to how they prepare for things uh, I don't know. I, I do a lot of silly shit. Like I've done the Walmart thing where I just run and go get ammo because something I didn't, I had a malfunction with maybe some of these reloads and I'm like, you know what, screw it. I'm going to shoot factory. I've had, I've purchased guns like a week before a match and I'm like, it's a brand new gun. Like, should I run it? Should I not stick with the old new stuff? I don't know. But one thing I do like to do is like to obviously grab the pistol and I'll carry that. I, I mean, I'm fortunate enough to carry a gun every day for work working at the gun shops that I do, but I'll carry that gun constantly and kind of like always gripping the gun, always have the, you know, always shooting after work, stuff like that. That's just kind of like my deal and like dry firing before, but that's like a week before. I know people go way crazy with it. I think maybe two weeks before it depends, but I don't know. I don't know what your routine, Jen, if there's anything special. It depends on the week. I'm probably less prepared for this match than I've been one in a while, but I mean, like the other day we went and shot for a group and I was like, I'm not even going to zero because I'm going to zero at the match. It's going to be different, you know, different atmosphere, everything. So I don't know. I'm kind of, I used to like get everything ready, like way, way, way in advance. And like, now I'm like, yeah, I mean, yeah. I did pack because I got to work all day, Wednesday and Thursday, but it go. is what it is. Ran Randy, any any tips here on uh, before major match prep? I mean, I'm not any better about it. I, I can't think of how many matches I've gone to where 11 o'clock the night before I'm leaving, I'm making ammo for it. Uh, I usually, I mean, the gun, there, there have been times where I took the scope off, put it back on, and had to zero it at a match. So I've done the same thing everyone else has. Loading fresh ammo. That's, a, that's tip, pro tip. You know, yeah. right before, right like less than 24 hours before you shoot the match, you're loading your ammo. Hey, fresh ammo shoots better. <laughs> Ask That's Gina. <laughs> That's what's said. So, I guess. Yep. Greg, here it's what you got. I got a couple live ones real quick. Uh, Mike Bell said, hey, y'all. And mm -hmm. uh, Tony wants to know what action and barrels do you use on your builds for your company? Uh, most of the actions I'm using are terminus and some big horns. Very cool. There we go, uh, and then oh, and then for barrels, uh, either proof, Bart line, uh, Brux, for the most part, but it depends on what the customer wants. Awesome, yeah, that's always true. You kind of got to, if someone wants an action, you kind of got to use it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So Randy, why why start your uh, LRS Precision Multi Gun Series? What's the goal of it? There's plenty of, you know, big box divisions been around for many years. Why bring in the new one? Uh, so the biggest reason is just to get more matches out there and to let um, new shooters experience two-day matches. So all of our matches are going to be a two-day match, but they're only going to cost $100 per match, uh, which is considerably cheaper than any of the other series. We're also having uh -huh. a, hunt a hunting rifle class. Um, that's going to let anyone who has any kind of hunting rifle at um, home be able to just come out and shoot. Uh, for the other types of stuff, we've got the PCCs and the ELR guns for people to be able to get behind. 
So they're not really going to have to bring anything except what they've got at home already. So it's really to get newer shooters involved. Yeah, I mean, I, I think awesome. it, a lot of people have that hunting rifle that's been sitting in their closet, whether you're an avid hunter or you had one passed down or, you know what I mean? You, exactly. You, you, just go, you can go and play. Um, the, I mean, a hundred bucks, I, you know, that's, that's enticing in itself because I, even some of these pistol games, I get some of the guys, dude, can you believe this match is going up to two fifty to sign into a pistol match? And I'm like, shit, you know, when you're, when you're kind of rubbing pennies between hotel, sometimes if you're, if, whether you're driving or you're flying, if you really add it up, I mean, hundred, two hundred dollar increase in a match fee kind of can make a difference to some oh. folks. Oh, absolutely. And then especially for new shooters, you've got guys who don't have the expensive competition guns and they're really intimidated by the fact that they're having, if they're having to pay 250, 300 bucks to try a match that they don't even know if they're going to like, mm -hmm. and they don't have equipment that's really set up for it. Uh, this is going to allow them to get into it. They'll find out if they like it, it'll definitely get them probably involved in the other series as well. So it's really trying to help the entire sport, not just get everyone drawn to our series. Yeah. yeah, and that, yeah. That's true about like any, any match series. And, you know, it's, it's nice when you sometimes see, you know, just people helping people matches, helping matches. Um, you know, I started a little local series here um, in NRL 22, and then we've had a little, you know, they do like a quarterly outlaw 22 precision precision match um and i think they're doing a little bit more this year but it's a really really fun match at a really cool place up there at the range at camp david and like both of our goals is literally we want to have fun and get people shooted sh get people shooting so you know at my match whenever i do the rules brief i make sure you know hey guys you know go up here if you're looking for another place to shoot and then they got a little whiteboard there with announcements they always have you know see greg cannon to learn about nrl 22 written on it and together, we're just trying to, to work to, to build the sport, bring new shooters into it. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I mean, and I know a lot of the games that, you know, with the production division, they, I think they've been leaning towards kind of, and, you know, the introduction of the gas gun division and stuff like that. So they've been trying to kind of peel everybody in that don't have these fancy flashy rifles that cost a lot of money and, you know, stuff like that. But I always go back to the game that I like to play is the IDPA. And you talk to a lot of guys that have played that game and they always move on to other games. Like that was kind of like the gateway. And then mm -hmm. all of a sudden they're, they're doing this or doing that. That, that kind of got their foot in the store. You're thinking production style pistols, your simple Glocks, your simple M&Ps. You get in, you play, you enjoy it, you like it. Then they're spending five Gs on an open gun. You know what I mean? And then there they go with a GM at that game. So – and then they'll come back and still play here and there. You know, it's it's a variety. Get people in, and then they like it. Obviously, they if they spend money, you're helping out the local companies. You're helping big. You know what I mean? It's it, it's there's a lot that goes into it. It's kind of like a, a tree, right? You enter the door, and then all of a sudden, people start selling stuff. Exactly. So I'm digging. It. Yeah, exactly. And that's why um, we're incorporating the multiple different disciplines into it with the PCC stuff. We're going to have pistols, uh, for either pistol stages or stages that are combining rifle and pistol, and then the ELR stuff. And it will really let people just try out a few different sports. And some of them are going to get hooked and start shooting probably USPSA, uh, PCC division. Some of them are going to get into ELR or ELR 22, stuff like that. So I'm so I'm curious, like if I show up with my hunting rifle, that's a couple hundred dollars altogether, right? And so how am I dabbling in ELR in your game? What what's going on? How am I doing that? Okay, so we have got depending on the range, we've got two different um, things that we're doing for the ELR stuff. We uh, a few of the ranges are long enough that we're actually going to have some 375s and 416s out on the stage, and people are going to be able to shoot those. So they're actually going to be shooting 2,500 yards plus. Then you've got um, ranges that obviously a lot of ranges aren't going to have the capability to shoot 2,500 plus yards. So those ones we're going to be doing ELR 22 uh, stages and we're going to have some of uh, the higher end 22s out there that people are going to be able to do. We're also going to add each of the matches, do a 22 world record shot. 
so everyone who shows up is going to be able to shoot for the record. That's awesome. No, I like it. What else you got, Greg? Anything? So uh, Stephen Carr wants to know where your matches are located, and so does Peter. Peter. All right. So right. <laughs> so right now we have got. Um, matches uh, i'm not going to put out the exact dates and locations yet but um we're still finalizing a few dates and things but we've got matches in arizona texas colorado new mexico or uh, missouri and indiana those are all set already we're working on getting some matches uh over to the east coast and we're going to try and get some a little bit more west coast like california if we can and oregon washington there we go. Awesome. Yeah, let us know when you get some out, out east. Particularly, um, the closer to Augusta, Georgia, the better the location for the match. <laughs> right. Purely because I really want to shoot this, and I have to drive so far for everything. Well, if anyone who's watching has a range that they want to have a whole host a match at, have them send me a message after the show. Reach out to... Uh, we'll, we'll see if we can get you a contact at GTI. They have an... I don't know if I don't know how far out they go. I'm not sure how well the ELR would go. We could do ELR 22 added as long as they've got uh, five or 600 yards. Oh yeah. They got that for sure. Um, but it's a, uh, it's an abandoned nuclear facility um, right at the edge of one of our nuclear plants. So they got like a 10 story tower, um, all sorts of crazy stuff to shoot off of. So it's a really, really cool place. Guardian did a match out there last year. Um, and I've shot, I shot a 22 match out there. That was pretty cool. So. There we go. Yeah, let's go, Randy. Let's go over to the divisions, right? Okay. What divisions are you going to have, and the challenge of kind of regulating equipment so it's as fair as possible? All right. So for divisions, we're going to have an open division, which is the same as everybody, pretty much anything you want, uh, thirty caliber and below, and thirty-two hundred feet per second um, speed, just like everybody else. We've got um, limited class, which is going to be your think for limited, your like Bagara B14s, your um, RPRs, stuff like that. And then hunting is going to be your hunting rifle with a fixed magazine, thin barrel. And we're still working exactly on the scope requirements for the hunting division. Um, and then we're also going to have a gas gun and a tactical division. And tactical is going to be 308, 223. And we're still finalizing the ammunition requirements there. Yeah, there you go. So this, I mean, when did you announce this whole deal? Because it seems fairly, fairly young. Obviously. It is, so when, um, we first announced it right the week after SHOT Show. Okay. So if you got, if anybody wants to follow along for all these updates that are, I, I know are coming... Where is a good place for them to follow along and get all this information as it arrives? Uh, the best place is going to be our Facebook page, which is LRS Precision Multi-Gun Series. And if you just search that, uh, give the page a like, and you'll be able to follow all of the announcements and everything that we've got going on there. Boom. So interesting. I mean, PCC division, hunting stuff. You got your gas gun stuff. You got your production rifles. You got your fancy guns like Greg and Jen. Um Go get out and play. All right, a hundred dollars to buy in what? Yep, and and it's two day two day match with full prize table. Okay, so the prize yeah. table's there also. So yeah, you got yeah. any companies right now backing you right now? Uh, yeah, we've got um, Burger, Lapua, um, Vortex, Quarter Circle Ten, and a few other ones we're finalizing. Uh, we're expecting pretty good turnout for that. We've got. Um, and the way we're going to work the prize table is going to be a little bit different than how a lot of uh, matches do it. Um, so the, the top top guys are going to obviously get to walk the prize table first. And then from there, we are going to kind of do a top shooter, bottom shooter to get newer people to be able to actually get on the prize table to be able to get the equipment the they're going to yeah. use. Mm -hmm. And that way, and we feel like that's going to help out um, the newer shooters and the sponsors a lot more. And we're going to kind of alternate that back and forth between top bottom after the top shooters from each division and stuff get to go. What do you think about that uh, system, Jen, as far as price table walks as always is like controversial. That's what I was about to say. It's always controversial. You know, I don't, 
I don't really shoot matches for the prize tables because, well, I've never really been all that high up. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I'm usually mid pack and I'm happy just going and shooting the match, but a lot of people really almost depend on getting something off the prize table to be able to get their money back. So yeah, I have mixed feelings because I don't want to be, um, I don't think everybody should get a trophy. Um, so I have mixed feelings, but I also yeah. feel like the people that need the gear are the people that are finishing at the bottom. So, and mm -hmm. the sponsors, I feel like get more out of their prize if it goes to someone farther down versus just as Frank Galley says, being listed on Sniper's Hide the next day. <laughs> um, yeah, so, that. yeah, we've all seen it. And I mean, I understand why they do it because that, that gets some money back and they already have their gear. So, you know, getting something off the price table doesn't help if they already have that gear. So I understand both sides of it. I don't know what the answer is um, because I, I am one that doesn't think everybody should get a trophy. Uh, I don't think I should get a trophy just because I show up. I don't think I should get a trophy just because I'm a girl. And, and by trophy, I mean the prizes, you know, going and getting a prize. So I get, I, think, I see it both ways. If you're going to, you should, I think Randy, if you should find a system that you think is, that works and stick with it. Yeah, I think ID, IDPA, they do a completely random. It don't matter if you finish first or last. That's what Everybody's I was about to say. thing goes in like a little little fish bowl, and your number gets pulled. And if you're one of the first people that gets called, you get one of those prizes on the table that may be the coolest. And you I've seen some it. matches that even do it before the match, not at the prize. They before they do a random draw, or if it's a two day match, um, like Guardian will do a two day match, and at the end of day one, they do dinner and a random draw, and then at the end of day two, it's all about the winners and it's the um, you know, the trophies are given out, the first place, second place, third place are recognized. So it kind of separates it instead of it being tied together with finish. It's like we do random draw and then. Mm -hmm. So I, I can see both. I, I could get convinced to either way. Yeah. Yeah, and, and that's something we have looked at, like that that's been brought up to do it as a random drawing. So I, I might actually put a poll up on the facebook page and see what more pe what people would prefer on that mm -hmm. so according to our our viewers i got a lot of people saying that they're they like the the random draw um and i do think that that's pretty cool too um i'm definitely um i don't even shoot as gen uh, shoot as good as gen i'm a very bottom of the pack shooter right now um and i do kind of depend on you know that that's how i built my gun is you know i Oh, I, I pulled a cert for this off of the table. I cert, built, pulled a cert for that off of the table. And everything that I've ever pulled off of a prize table is in my backpack going to the match because I borrowed a lot of gear. Thanks, Jen. Um, mm. Or shared a lot of gear getting into it. So it's kind of nice having that, uh, the ability to kind of reward the, the lower end shooters as well. And I also agree with the fact that, you know, the person that came in first that or you know top 10 at a big prs match that already has an optic sponsor already has a chassis sponsor already has this that and the other thing you know if you're sponsored by chassis company a and you pull chassis companies b chassis off the table you're not going to use that you're going to you're going to sell it on sniper side um so it is nice to get the people at the bottom that may be using you know their uh you know three three owner beat to heck stock that they bought off a of sniper side for four hundred dollars um but if they go and pull a brand new chassis off the price table they're gonna enjoy it a lot more um and i know that there's a lot of companies that instead of throwing stuff on prize tables try and target newer shooters like for instance that that's how i got this awesome chassis here um craig from pdc custom he sponsored a, a group that Jen started called the Gap Grind Amateur Help Group um, that really was, and it's a group designed all for the amateurs. She re it reaches out to companies and it's like, hey, I got a bunch of brand new shooters coming into the sport. Do you want to give them discounts or, or whatever? And Craig came on and he's like, hey, um, come up with a way to give away a free chassis. Um, so they, they put up a post that was like, you know, write why you need the chassis, send a picture of your current chassis or whatever, and I'll, I'll choose one. I think um, you just like put a picture up of what you had and everyone was like, okay, he went. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was, it was, it, that was bad. It, it, it was, it was, it was pretty bad. It, it, what, what I had did not fit me at all. Um, 
you know, it, it, it was, it was terrible to try and shoot. Um, and that's how he did it. And, you know, he's now got, you know, he gave this to me and I'm sitting here telling everybody, dudes, check out this chassis. It's awesome. You know, it's my favorite thing in the world. Um, and yeah. he, well, and it's like I've said, as far as sponsorships too, if a, if a sponsored shooter isn't talking to the new shooters, they're not, they're not doing that company any good that they're recognizing because someone that gets something that's a newer shooter to a sport is going to talk about it. Like Greg, like all he talks about is that PDC chassis. I love it. It's <laughs> because beautiful. He it's loves it. Yeah. But he talks about it all the time because yeah. he appreciated it so much and he needed it and it was great. And so the newer shooters, I feel like, um, mm -hmm will toot the horn a little bit more just because they're so excited to have it so not that top shooters shouldn't be sponsored but they should definitely be interacting with the newer shooters or the last place shooters and you know talking with them so mm -hmm. yeah and that's something that i that i that's one of the reasons behind me starting my nrl 22 series is purely just it's a great way to to help new people into the uh, into the sport um, yeah. You know, we did a, I, I met a, a, you know, a new youth shooter last weekend up at the Camp David match or two weekends ago. Um, and I kind of bribed her. I was like, hey, if you, if you come and shoot my match, I will have the number five best female precision rifle shooter in the entire world hey. coach you through the match. That'd be, that'd be Miss Seymour there. Um, there you go. So uh, we actually had her come over and, and work with her a little bit over the weekend and, you know, it's just it's just really really fun to get new people into the sport and kind of help them out and build them up, and then they bring more people in and they bring more people in, and then we have more people to shoot against. Yeah, that that's awesome, and that and that is that actually brings up another point of what we're going to be doing on my matches. Every match, um, each day, we're, one of the stages is going to be a training stage. So we're going to have some of the top shooters actually putting on a class. So instead of shooting that stage, you're getting instruction from top shooter. And then the stage following that, you're going to go directly into shooting and putting what you learned to the test on a stage. Yep. Tony Muni uh, commented that one of the best things he's ever seen was at Alabama, one of the top shooters got a scope off the prize table, immediately walked down and asked who the last place finisher was and went and walked over and handed it to him and you see that a lot in brs where top shooters will kind of, i know paul reed will ask like if he's 11th he'll ask who was 111th and he'll get that person to walk the prize table and pick what they want you know in his place so a lot of people in the sport do that and help out the newer shooters which is awesome yeah that that's awesome and and I'm just thinking, because I know these scopes are worth some coin. Like, it, mm -hmm. these scopes are worth more than the guns are. Like, handguns that you went off a table. Like, these scope, these these top scopes are worth more than that. So, I understand people's re retort, like, towards that, hey, I work to be this good. Be, I'm, I am work to be sponsored by all these people. I'm at the top in the nation. I, I can, why not? Why not grab that scope and just sell it to get two Gs in my pocket? You know, so there's nothing to me. There's nothing wrong with that. I think it's more admirable that a top shooter will hand that scope down to the 111 position. I mean, to me, that like the smile on the face is worth more than two thousand dollars in a sense. When I got a fucking night force on my gun and probably a night force on my backup gun, you know what I mean? So yeah, and and, and about, you know, I like I do find it kind of tacky the people that pull something off the prize table that was donated and, and sell it the next day. But I also kind of I understand it. it's a really expensive sport, right? You know, ju just shooting a match, you know, you got gas, you know, like I said, our closest match is five hours away. You got at least three nights in a hotel or an Airbnb. You got 300 rounds of center fire ammo plus, you know, two to $300 entry fee. And that's not including the gun. So it is expensive. And, you know, s sometimes you, it's hard to be able to afford to shoot it to shoot as much as you want to selling that um, scope pays for that match baby. It, it it does that's why i um, said i see both ways of it it's yeah i find it tacky but i also see how it's you know depending on who you are maybe you know that may be what you have to do you may have to shoot good to be able to afford the next match because you're gonna spend almost as much as that scope to go shoot your next match 
There it is. Jared Carpenter, speaking of scopes, said that he needs to borrow my night force. Hadn't talked to you in ages, Jared, by the way. And I was like, yeah, you can borrow it for like $3,000. And uh, he said, how about a high five? And I said, I think I'll high five you across your face if you steal my scope. <laughs> oh, he busted out the Judy chop. Yeah, he said he'll, we're having a we're having war on the comments section. <laughs> <laughs> Jared, just be careful. I'm not sure if she's ever punched you, but it it, it hurts. Be careful, man. <laughs> <laughs> Look, An Anthony disappeared. He did. I think he had a baby at the door. Yeah. <laughs> you gotta love it. Mm. Gotta love the babies. Let's see. He wanted to do discount corner next. Okay. So, so Jen, will, you normally start us off. I will start us off on that. Uh, so you can get 10% off at carbonarms.us on shotgun shell caddies. I know that sounds crazy because I don't shoot that anymore, but I uh, still love their caddies. They're the best around. They are. Um, and I, I miss my shotgun. Can we go shoot shotgun sometime? I should go shoot it. Anyway, um, check them out and get 10% off with the code TSM10. Um, you can also get 10% off of awesome jerseys and uh, hoodies and arm sleeves and pants, pretty much anything you want to wear, Chris will make. Oh, you don't have so, to wear it though. So like, do you see everything he did for Hunter's HD Gold? Yeah, he did. He like tents and banners and like anything you want something written on, he, he can make. Great oh, guy, man. great company, veteran owned. Um, and you can get 10% off if you mention the shooter's mindset. So go to the Facebook page under industries, it's U N D R, and check them out and just send them a message and mention the shooter's mindset. You can get 10% off. And they're great jerseys. That's what I wear. That's also what I wear. So I'm, I'm not as cool as Jen. I, I, I got one, but it's a really good one. So I have the code MINDSET10. It's in all caps. It'll save you. Oh, wow. Remember that rain you were talking about at the beginning of the show? Mm -hmm. It has made it to Grovetown. Oh, wow. Um, anyway, MINDSET10. It'll save you 10% off of all PhoneScope products. Um, PhoneScope, it's, it's, it's just a really freaking cool thing that you should have in your toolbox. Um, I see a lot of potential in it with training. You know, I used mine when uh, when I was trying to get my, my parents who have never shot past maybe 50 yards impacting on a target at, what do we do, 600 yards? I think as far as the range went at the time we were there. Um, and it's really great. You know, you can record it. So if you want to be like super lit for the gram, um, you know, you can make some really sweet Instagram videos there. But also if you're just trying to, uh, you know, help somebody out, you can see, you know, you mount your phone on the phone scope on the side of the scope and you can literally sit there and steer them in so this way you don't have to go through you know four hours of saying all right whole you know we're going to dial in 1.6 and then i want you to uh hold 0.5 for mil or for wind you just sit there and you're like okay yep right there all right now pull the trigger so it does make life a lot easier yeah we didn't uh whenever i was working with taryn on saturday I didn't get into holdovers because I feel like I filled her brain with a lot of fundamental stuff I wanted her to remember, but I told mm -hmm. her we'll do holdovers one day soon and I'll probably use my phone scope with that so that I can explain it to her and then I can watch um, where she's holding and, and help guide that a little bit. I think it's a great teaching tool. It's great for the gram, but I like it for teaching. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's my favorite thing about it. Um, I was actually about to like hook that up on my rifle for you guys before I got on that lovely two and a half hour phone call with work. Yep. But anyway, Anthony, oh, now he can hear me. Anthony, nice, nice. we were doing discount corner and that was perfect timing because it's your turn because we've done our discounts. Oh, all right. So it happens to work out. Uh, what do I have? Uh, just the folks over at UM Tactical. UMTactical.com gets you TSM 10 gets you 10% off on their website. They have a lot of uh, holsters and AR-15 parts and accessories, AR-15 style rifles, all that stuff over at UM Tactical. Other than that, man, I only got one. That's all. That's all I got. Okay. Cool. All right, we got a couple live to get to real quick. Um. Um. um wow, we got a lot more. Um. Let's see. 
Where do we go? Where do we go? Where do we go? Brian from Hunter's HD Gold said, Chris with Thunder is amazing. And that is very much a true statement. Um, Jarrett has a question for all of us. Um, bipods. What have you tried um, and why have you settled on what you use now? Uh, we'll let Randy start while I grab my bipod. Okay. Um, I, I run a Thunder Beast bipod. It, I absolutely love it. It pretty much is the gap between an Atlas and a Harris. So it's kind of got the best of both of those. Thunder Beast. You guys, I think Jen and Greg are on the same bipod right now. Well, we're the same brand, but you know, she's the, she is the Joneses that I try and keep up with. So she got hers, the Gen 1. I got the Gen 2. So my favorite bipod is the uh, Warren Skyline. Um, and the thing I like about it, the two bipods you hear most about in Precision Rifle is the, the Warren and the, the Harris. And the thing that people like about the, the uh, Harris is that you can't your legs at 45 degrees like that. And the thing that people like about the Warren is that you can quick deploy your legs like that. With the, or excuse me, the thing that people like about the Harris is you can quick deploy like that. With the Warren, depending on which direction you have it on the rifle, you can have either 45 degree camp forward or you can have quick deploy. Um, I also like how the legs work. If you need to pull it out longer, you just kind of pull on it. If you need to bring it down one at a time, you know, because that's an issue you run into a lot is you try and bring your bipod down just a little bit while you're adjusting it on a stage um, and you accidentally, you know, crash it all the way into the ground, rifle goes falling off, whatever. Um, so this is kind of, I like everything about it. There's really not much that I that I don't like about it. And Jen, I'm not sure if you have anything to add on that or not. Um, I like it. It'll cant, it'll swivel, it'll go out, it'll do 45 degrees. It just does everything that I need and I like it. Yeah, I don't know. I just, I've, I've owned very few. I was told to get a Harris. It was really affordable at about that $90, $99 Mark by one of Regina, who I, I don't know, I was bothering her at one point. She said, just get a Harris, and that's what I did. So, but I don't speak that from knowledge. It's just the only bipod I've ever owned, and it seemed to work decent. And I own a Harris, and I take it, it's packed in my stuff to go to the match with me because if I ever have an issue with a bipod, I want to have a backup. I like my Harris, it's just that I like being able to do 45 degrees. I've used that mm -hmm. a good bit, like getting really low um, on some some positions it's just easier to be able to get a little bit lower so i like the 45 degree for that yeah and an, another one that i like a lot um my first bipod i got was the um um um, um the magpul actually because when i was getting ready for my first match the magpul had just came out um and there's a lot of buzz about it on the internet and i was like oh heck it's a hundred dollars um much cheaper than any of the other ones out on the market you know besides it's right in the same price range as a harris um so i bought that to try it out and i've had a uh a, a lot of good luck with it um i do you know i like the warren a lot more it's a little bit a little bit more stable um but there's absolutely nothing bad about that magpul for the price yep yeah there's a lot yeah. of good ones out there the sky pods are amazing they're they're amazing. I'm just poor. If you need a ball on a yeah. budget, I think the Harrods are pretty pretty affordable at around ninety to one hundred. I think you most of them the that uh what are those worn stuff that are going for like two change somewhere in there, I think. Higher? There there you go. So I yeah, mean they're like three what are they? Three fifty speaking about three fifty. Back to the whole pulling things off of the prize table that are uh that are awesome and I use at every single match. Thank you, Warren. There you go. <laughs> I, say, I, I got both the Skyline bipod and the Skyline mount off of the uh, off of the prize table. Well, because everybody walks the prize table and they're looking for something worth a lot of money and something big. And Warren puts their, their certs in an ammo can. And so they see an ammo can with Warren on it and they're like, hey, whatever. And they go buy it. Like I've been yeah, like, like almost dead last before and gone up there and like two of those were sitting there and I was like, okay, I'll take one of those. And yeah, same here. It's Full got a cert in there for either a scope mount or a um, bipod, which yeah. is like worth $400. Yeah, they, they give you a $400 gift certificate 
every tool they make, some cool stickers and stuff. Um, oh, yeah. It, it, it's, and they, there's every single PRS match I've ever been to, there's been, uh, there's been tons of them, you know, at least four or five of them. So it's, a, it's really generous of them to do it. And, you know, I, I almost feel like I'm gaming the system with how many of those ammo cans I have. But like mm-hmm. every single one of them I use, you know, I got, I got this, I got my uh, Skyline mount that's now on the backup rifle. I got a cert that I mailed into them to get a Skyline mount for that really awesome razor behind me. Yeah. Back when I wasn't a retired shooter and I was an active shooter, I was sponsored by that company and I have three, four of their mounts, all the tools and all the, all everything to, to mount it up and great company, great mounts. Haven't owned their Skyline bipod, but I'm sure if it's anything like their mounts are and their customer service and how they support the game, go get one if you could. Yeah, it's <clears> awesome. <throat> so from the uh, peanut gallery, I mean the live feed, <clears throat> uh, Chad Hickler said, uh, "Hey Chad, I can't say, uh, Skypod for the win," um, which is true. If if I had if I sold a testicle or something, I'd probably buy one of those. Um, <laughs> they're really awesome. We had MDT on the show yeah they're sweet um those um, things are for the for the rich oh yeah oh yeah um swanee copies us he says that the uh, worn bipods are pretty much the best also available on swanee's com. um jared said atlas b10 not hot anymore um atlases are awesome tons of people shoot them mm-hmm. i don't I, think any of us have them chad said I, hi, had, I had one at one point yeah, tons of people shoot them, um, and they got they have a they have a couple new ones out. I don't know all the names of them, um, but they do have some really nice bipods out there that are just as comparable as this. Um, there just wasn't one on the prize table for me to pick up, and there was yeah. a there was a warrant. Um, so, yeah, I, I I think I like the legs of the warrant a little bit better. I like how easy they are to adjust. You don't have to worry about accidentally dumping the gun over. Um, but Atlas does make an amazing bipod as well. Did we talk about, uh, Randy, any membership for uh, your yeah. multi-series? Uh, yeah, we're, we are working on that. Um, we haven't implemented it yet. If we do, it's probably going to be either 150 a year, but that's going to include one match entry fee as well as discounts with some of our sponsors. Dang, so technically wow. only 50 bucks. Yeah. 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 It's a good deal. Yeah, and and everything we're doing is designed to get people involved in shooting. We're not trying to make a lot of money off of the matches. We're trying to get people shooting, and we're trying to help sponsors out. There we go. I know you hinted at some stage guns. So regarding the ELR stuff, you were going to have stage guns provided, ammunition provided. Also, the piece, uh, the pistol caliber carbine stuff, is that, that the deal? Yeah, so the pistol caliber carbines are coming from Quarter Circle 10. Uh, they're, they're providing uh, two stage guns for us to use. Uh, and they're, in my opinion, one of the best pistol caliber carbines out there. Um, a lot of people I know in USPSA use them. Uh, seems like a lot of people don't realize they sell full guns and think that they only sell the receivers. But oh, they, shit, I thought they sold the receivers only. No, they they do they do full guns. Uh, they're uh, we're getting the Glock small frame ARs from them for the matches. So okay, there you go. Um, one thing that I propose I talked to Jen and Greg in the private chat with us. Uh, still on the fence. I like both companies, the Savage uh, One Ten Elite Precision Rifle or their and their Daniel Defense Delta Five. I've been talking about the Delta Five for a little bit. But uh, haven't got to handle neither of them, but pretty both pretty good companies. Randy, what are your thoughts on if I was to buy one of these? Where where what where are you leaning towards? Savage, no no doubt about it. I I messed with the Delta Five and was not impressed at all. Uh, I feel like it's the action just felt gritty. I think they really missed the footprint because they went with a custom footprint that's them so you really don't have stock options they did get it to where you can use a remington 700 trigger but other than that you really can't change anything on it the and then the barrel system they've got 
is neat. I like the way you can change the barrel because it's kind of just basically an AR extension. So it's just like changing an AR barrel. But the calibers they came out with just didn't make sense to me. Yeah, so you got 308 and 65 for the Delta 5. Um, from my, the Savage, I know they got a 65. I know they probably got a 308. I'm not sure if there's anything else out there. Uh, they sh I'm pretty sure they've got a six Creed more. Uh, That's what I was about to say. I think a six Creed more, a six five Creed more, and three oh eight. I think. Yeah, but but with Savage, their barrels you can get prefits really easily, and anyone can change a Savage barrel. It it takes not even ten minutes to do. Yeah, they have a. So I'm also gonna gonna agree with Randy on this with the Savage. I've not so I have not shot the Daniel Defense gun but I have shot the Savage a couple of times. We were actually there when they kind of debuted it at Gap Grind. Um, somehow Jen and I ended up on the commercials for it, all sorts of crazy stuff. Um, but man, they gave us the Savage. They gave us some factory, I think it was federal match ammo. And they're like, how, how big was the target? Do you remember? 12 inches? Yeah. Like that. yeah ten, it was ten, a small, it was not a Nipsic. Yeah, 10, 10 or 12 inches at a thousand yards. And after I cheated and had uh, the number five top best female shooter in the world give me her wind calls, I just <laughs> absolutely hammered that thing at a thousand yards with a factory gun with factory ammo. Um, you know, if you shoot that and then you go and shoot a Gunworks rifle, a GA Precision, you'll definitely notice a difference. Um, but you're, it shoots freaking good. Um, at shot yeah, show it. at range day this is what he did oh oh we're gonna shoot ladies first and i'd shoot and i'd get up and he goes so what what was your wind hold i'm a gentleman <laughs> what can i say i'm, I'm polite like that i, I always let, let and that's what he did with the savage too oh ladies first what was a, a range day what were they what were you shooting out to a thousand mm -hmm. and i shot the yeah. savage that day Yep. You also hit a thousand yards with a freaking sixteen inch AR off of a pile of Caldwell bags. I did the rise armament one. <laughs> that was that was cool. Also back to the calibers. Um six five creed more, two two three Remington, three hundred wind bag, wind mag, three oh eight Winchester, three three eight Lapua, and six millimeter creed more. There you go. Yeah, so you got yeah. Also, which which matters, it's Savage is more affordable than the Daniel Defense is saying. And they intentionally tried to make it where you you had options with it. So they intentionally went with MDT for the design um, because with that, MDT has a whole line of different stuff. It already comes with an awesome chassis, but if you don't want that chassis, it's a Savage. It's a, Sa a Savage 110. So pretty much everybody makes a stock or a chassis for it. If you're, you know, if you're an MPA guy, if you're a McMillan guy, if you're a PDC guy, whatever, you know, you could do that and you could sell that chassis for a lot of money, probably about half as much as the gun cost <laughs> and uh, buy whatever chassis you want. Um, but if you like the chassis, you can get all their accessories, their bag riders, their weight kits, um, their Gen 2 grip and any, anything you could think of, you can get for the gun already. Well, it's kind of a no-brainer. Yeah, and and savages shoot. Um, I know Randy Wise set the world record for ELR with uh, basically stock savage in a different chassis. Yeah, and you know if you look at uh, uh, what was it the best in Texas that Scott Satterley came in first in production with the uh, one ten elite precision and prime ammunition. So factory gun, factory ammo. Literally go to the store, buy things, and go. Yeah, there you go. Uh, so if anybody else was thinking about buying a uh, production style rifle out the gate, there you go. There's some information on both of those. And Daniel Defense sponsors the PRS. So all things to consider. I know Savage probably does their sponsorship and all that stuff. So um, if you consider that, which you probably should, you know, there's also considerations. Uh, what do we have here? Gear that you run, gun, bags, caliber. This is for Randy gear rundown what do you got okay so for bags i use thunderbird long range uh so it's a fairly small company they make amazing bags uh, for my my gun is a bighorn tl3 action with a brux barrel in 6xc in a mcmillan a6 
with an Area 419 brake and a Bushnell XRS2. Oh, there we go. A uh, quick rundown on gear. I know we went over Greg's. Jen, what do you got? Anything that you don't, you're not many, not many changes for your gear, right? Nope. I have the McMillan A10. I am probably about to order a McMillan Z10 to try the new, uh, it's a version of the A10. It's a little bit different. It can put pretty much any barrel in it without having to be fit specific to the barrel. But anyway, it's an A10 McMillan chassis with a Hawk Hill barrel with a Curtis Custom Action, uh, a Vector, a Night Force Optic, Attacker, the Attacker 5 to 25. No, you cannot have it, Jared. Um, Warren Scope Mount, Warren Bipod. Uh, um, my rail is an Ingenuity rail underneath and a wee bad cheek, uh, cheek piece cover. Bag Bags are also wee bad. Yep, and my bags are wee bad. All right. Quick. And my tripod is a really right stuff. Ooh. Because Regina McBitch is awesome. See, that was a prize table giveaway there because she's amazing. Ooh, and this was a this was a hand me down prize table giveaway. <laughs> that wasn't a prize table. I bought that. <laughs> yeah, but when when she gave you that, you're like, well, I guess I gotta give my whole one to. Thank you. <laughs> there you go. If somebody pays it for, do you? You have to pay it for to somebody else that doesn't. She could have sold it. it. She could have sold it and put some money in her pocket, but she, she decided it'd be nice. Don't she don't is. tell Tim that. Um, yes, so it was amazing, and I love my rifle. And I'm shooting six five Creedmoor right now. But um, as soon as I get some ammo from Prime Ammunition, who is finishing up their six GT ammo now, they're tweaking it, and it's almost out. I'll be shooting six GT. Have a barrel spun up, ready to go. Hmm. Um, what else you got? Any live on on the end, Greg, or no? Um, 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 so Tony agrees with us. Um, he said that $150 ish, including the membership and match fee. Um, he also agrees with us. He didn't say this, but I'm assuming that he says the closer to Augusta, the better. Um, yeah. also back on that there, um, what did, where did it go? Hold on, scrolling through. We got a lot of them. Altus is pretty close to you guys though. Now it's not horrible. I mean, that's Six eight hours. hours. So, hey, oh, by the way, totally off topic, but kind of on topic. Um, Mike Bell commented, Cool Acre Sporting Camp, a thousand plus yard in Swainsboro. That's only about an hour and a half from us. Um, so there's another close range. And also I clicked over to their page and um, they're hosting six PRS regional matches this year. So um, we're going to go shoot those. Mm -hmm. Depending on what weekend they are. Um, anything else useful here? Um, Randy, Swanee wants to know if you could spit rhymes with that sick mic you got. No, no, I cannot. You cannot? <laughs> like, I, I, I definitely don't know. cannot. I, 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 I put that out there before in the pre-show. I'm like, dude, what setup are you running? That's a sweet, that's a sweet mic. That's a, what, what is this thing? It's a, it's just a, it's called a blue microphone. I don't know, but I'm digging it. But I don't, I, I got to look into it. So we'll we'll get some we'll exchange some information after. Hey, that, gotta... that's what brand mine is. Blue. There mine is. doesn't look quite as cool as yours though. It wasn't very expensive. I I think it was like fifty or sixty bucks for the whole setup. That's not. That's that's really cheap. That's I I think I got more in this setup right here, right? And this and that than I think it's like seventy bucks in this one. Greg's and mic works so good that you can hear him type. Yeah, yeah, listen. Hey, that's what you usually hear in the podcast feed or something like that. Someone typing. Um, what else we got? Uh, how do we think we can further grow the precision rifle sport, Randy? What else? I mean, obviously, with your with your series, your precision series you got coming out, that's one way to do it. But what else do you think we can do to uh, help grow it? I mean, the biggest thing I see is just encouraging people to get out and try it. Uh, I see all kinds of posts on Facebook groups where they're asking, hey, what should I do to prepare for a match? What gear should I get? All of this, when really it's take the rifle you have, 
go to a match. Someone is going to be there to let you borrow bags to see what works best for you. They're going to, any equipment you need other than your rifle and ammo, you're going to be able to borrow from somebody. And that way you can kind of try different things and you're not buying eight different bags that cost 75 or a hundred bucks a piece until you find one that you like. Hey, I mean, you could do like me. I didn't even have my own gun. I borrowed a gun for the first match and went with dope written on an index card. I did not have an app or anything. Didn't have a chrono, didn't (laughs) borrowed bags the whole time. And look at me now, I love it. You didn't really know, you didn't know anybody at all when you first showed up, like nobody, zero? zero. I had, we had had Regina on the show Mm -hmm. and I had talked to her through Messenger, but I had never met her. Right. And other than her, I didn't know a soul. And I went right. to the game grind. Yeah. By myself. Didn't know anybody. I know because I know it can be kind of intimidating. You're just showing up with like your 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 protection and whatever your 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 safety gear and you don't like I I know it's it's probably as simple as, Hey, how you doing? and probably just breaking that barrier, but I can understand people are just not gonna show up to a match and act some dude. Yo, let me borrow your seven thousand dollar rifle and some bags. I mean, I'm sure they'll do it, but I just know it'll be kind of odd and weird, probably for some folks. Well, it's it's hard to find. You know, at a pistol match, like whenever I went to pistol matches, I always bought, you know, an extra gun, an extra match worth of ammo with me, stuff like that. Um, but in right. PRS, you know an extra 300 rounds of, you know, six, five Creedmoor is not cheap and not something, you know, it's not something people have all the time with them. It's not that they don't want to share, but like that's friggin' expensive. Right. Um, and hopefully this season I'll be able to finally have a, a backup rifle and literally it's going to end up being something like, you know, I, I think I have all the parts for it, but like the bipod on it's a piece. So like, I might like maybe, nicely ask Jen to bring her bipod and then we'll have in between the two of us we'll manage to have one spare set up so it's I just I in the pistol game I remember I talked to a dude who already done it he wasn't no grandmaster flash he wasn't a top shooter in the nation he's just done it and he knew where to go he knew where the local matches were he knew what direction to point me as far as like what gun which was like Dude, just get a Glock. He didn't even shoot a Glock. He's like, dude, just get a Glock 34. You'll be fine. Go out there with factory ammunition. You know, get your – I ran a – I remember it was a bottom – I think it was a – I started off with a Phobos holster. Dude, those things are $20, 25 bucks all day long on eBay. And some Phobos double mag pouches. And that's how I entered a game. And those – shit, I can probably use that gear right now. And, like, from what I know, I can probably still do really well. With that holster, those mag pouches, that gun, I mean, that's all I needed. It was just someone to encourage me and coach me through. And we were told we were not local. He was in northern Florida or central Florida. I was in south Florida. We didn't shoot together. He just caught hours of conversation on the phone. And that's how I just got up the courage and just walked into a local match. And that was uh, it. So so my, my first match I shot, um, it was a Carby match at Sharpshooters here in Augusta, the little local match. And basically, me and one of my buddies were there um, just playing around one day, you know, shooting our ARs. And the RO told us, he's like, yeah, this Saturday we have a car B match. And we're like, what's that? And he, you know, kind of told us about it. And like, I've thought about competition shooting for years and years and years and never really thought much about it. He said, if you guys don't come, I'm just basically going to talk shit to you guys every day for the rest of your, every time I see you after this. So we came out and did it. So glad we did. We just came out with what we had. Um, but also for any of our viewers watching, I know I don't mind. I know Jen doesn't mind if you're thinking about getting in the precision rifle series or any other, um, discipline of shooting for that matter. Um, just shoot us a message. Um, we're, we're willing to help any way we can, whether it's, you know, we know, I actually have friends in the precision rifle world, like at a couple of them. Um, so we're willing to help out, you know, maybe we can find someone that lives close to you that you can go shoot a day with, or maybe we can, you know, find someone that's going to be at a match that you're going to be at or what, you know, any, any questions that you think are dumb, just let us know. We can kind of help. Um, Also, Swanee said, um, do you guys know that Swanee has a blog on his page now? Um, So if you go to swanee'scompgear.com and click on the top on jump in, he has a couple articles about 
um, getting started in competitive shooting. That's cool. Hey, uh, Mike Bell said he got started at the Pine Tucky intro com to competitive shooting class. We taught that probably many, many years after Mike Bell got into it. That's how I got into it, though, too, is I took that same class. That was the first thing I took. Mine was Mirko just shit talking me to come out to a sharps match. Mm -hmm. Ooh, Adam, Adam said if any new shooters in uh, southern Indiana want to come out to his club match, he'll hand you his rifle and ammo, so bring it on. So that's really cool. That's a, that's a really nice thing, because like I said, uh, barrel life and ammo is not cheap. Yeah, I'm barely affording my own barrels. <laughs> Truth. <laughs> like one at, one or two at a time. I can't do like these people that have so many. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it's an uh, awesome deal though, Adam. Yeah, that really is. Uh Randy, do you have any upcoming matches or goals um that you're gonna either shoot or host or anything? Uh, I mean, I've got a one-day match at Altus on Saturday coming up, and then I'm shooting the NRL 22 match there on Sunday. That's really. awesome. I love some NRL 22. Honestly, I almost think I enjoy NRL 22 more than the Centerfire stuff at times. Like, there's nothing compared to the feeling of pulling the trigger and then just sitting there and waiting and waiting and waiting and then seeing the bullet smack something you know 1300 yards away but, but there's the, also something about sending it and not seeing dollar signs <laughs> exactly exactly, yeah. exactly exactly and it and, then, and it's and then elr 22 is getting more popular now too so they're starting matches for that shooting out to six seven hundred yards at, at altus uh not at altus yet oh. um i need to actually talk to them about that but um Brian, uh, buddy of mine, Brian Wink, is getting ready to put on a series of ELR 22 matches around the Northwest, I believe. That's awesome. That's very uh, cool. The, the closest to ELR I've done with 22 is one day after a match um, up there at Camp David. They're like, oh, yeah, we're having a, a bonus stage or whatever. And it was like a $10 buy in, winner takes all type deal, where basically we went, we went out to their center fire range and just kind of kept. You know, we'd all shoot at one target and shoot at the next target, shoot at the next target, and see who would, um, who could impact out the furthest. Um, unfortunately, the people I was shooting with, shooting against, um, they only made it out to 350. So I hit the, they only made it out to 325. I, I think it was 325. I don't know. It was about 350 is the farthest I've shot my 22. Um, but it was so consistent at that, I wanted to keep stretching it out. But it's about time to head home by the end of that. No doubt. Where are we at on the on the notes nine. here? Number so, nine. Yep. Okay. Cool. Uh, Greg, you want to throw a number nine out there? Yeah. Um, so, will your match limit any gear to try and even the playing field? Um, kind of like NRL twenty two does with no tripods, no gamer plates. Um, and what are what are kind of your feelings on the whole thing? Are you a uh, you know if you can afford it, you should be able to shoot it, or are you trying to kind of even everything out so we are gonna probably be limiting the hunting class to one or two small bags some, some nothing you wouldn't have if you go out to uh just out hunting but the rest of it we're going to let you use whatever you've got i don't i've never really liked limiting what people can use on matches Will tripods be deployed on the clock? I don't know yet. That was the controversy of last year. <laughs> yeah. Um, also, will your matches be able to compete in the ARS? I mean, I don't think anyone can really compete with the ARS, so. LRS, ARS. <laughs> <laughs> there's, a, there's a game for everybody. Yeah. So there we go. Unless we have any more live, I think we can almost wrap this one up. What do we got? Anything? Let me go over and check live real quick. <coughs> I think it was good. Yeah, I think we're good online. There we go. Uh, we're going to wind this one down here to shout outs. Jen, we'll start off with you. What do we got? 
Shout out to Prime Ammo. I just got my 6.5 Creedmoor for the match this weekend. McMillan Stocks. Check out the A10 or the Z10. Uh, Night Force Optics. Warren Scope Mounts, of course. We talked about them. GSL Suppressors for keeping me civilized. HD Gold. Under Industries. Shooters of Augusta and Sharpshooters of Augusta. And Spartan Precision Rifles, who just chambered my 6GT rifles. I can't wait to get some ammo and try those out. Um, Greg, what do you got? So I have Shooters and Sharpshooters of Augusta, the place where I got my starting competition shooting, as well as my FFL, as well as where I go to do all my load development and everything like that. Um, I'm not sure if I've said this enough in this episode, but PDC Custom, if you want a beautiful lime green rifle chassis, or like normal civilized colors as well, they also have. Um, NDZ Performance, if you want to build a Gucci Glock. Uh, phone Scope. Shooter's World Propellant. Um, I've loaded up a whole bunch of it. Also, for those of you experiencing this powder shortage, it's not real if you shoot Shooter's World Powder. Just saying. Um, Hunter's HD Gold. Um, if you haven't tried them, you really should. I think uh, Brian went out to, I think it was his first PRS match last weekend, maybe the weekend before. I don't know. Dates are in blur right now in my world. Um, they really do help. Um, if you're at a match that I'm at, holler at me if you want to try mine on. They're prescription. I got to get a, another pair to let people try out. Um, but they really are a world of difference. Uh, Bortec. Like, if you thought that what you had to clean your rifle with was good, check their stuff out. It's awesome. I meant to clean mine before this show, but I had about two minutes in between the time I put the gun together and ran out here. Yeah. Uh, Randy, what do you have as far as shout-outs, man? Uh, big shout-out to Quarter Circle 10 for supplying the stage guns to the match. Um, always McMillan. Uh, absolutely love their stocks. Shooter's World Powder been using them for years awesome there we go uh shout outs on my end i just want to i don't i wear a hunter's hd gold also i don't have a prescription yet and i tell you from what i was wearing before as far as how this technology as far as the lens coatings go and what you see i mean and shooting a major a couple weeks ago man i really do appreciate the Hunter's HD Gold and the clarity you get with those. Uh, very impressed with their stuff. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you're watching on the YouTube side of things. Right below the video, you see a yellow subscribe button. Every Tuesday at 9 Eastern, we're doing a new episode of The Shooter's Mindset, so be sure to be subscribed. Uh, Tandem Cross for all your rimfire needs. Uh, if you want to email me, theshootersmindset at gmail.com is a good way to do that. Uh, definitely thanks to Randy here for sharing uh, his new game coming up here and uh, early information, just sharing his knowledge in the sport. Um, and lastly here, Rise Armament for some fantastic AR-15s and AR-15 triggers. That'll do it for episode, what are we on? 284 now, Other Shooters Mindset. Thank you guys for tuning in tonight. See you on the next one. Bye-bye now.